Today we're going to discuss some clinical cases that uh, are challenging when dealing with the dental dam. And we are talking about isolating dental dam for multiple arch procedures. Uh, you know, there are times when more than one arch may be convenient to isolate and it is less time consuming by doing so. For example, if you have a class one lesion on an upper and a lower opposing molars, or, or you're placing sealants on these teeth, then isolating both at the same time will expedite the procedure. Now, the important thing, of course, is to prepare your dam so that you're leaving enough space between your anchor teeth. And in this case, we're using the non-latex frame flexidam, which has the integrated frame. Much easier to deal with. And so as you see, I've made, we're isolating the first permanent molars on the upper and lower arch, and I made sure that there's enough room between these two regions. And so once the length is determined in terms of the separation between the clamps, we are ready to place our wing clamps into position. And so we simply insert the wing clamp into the dental dam. And for the upper arch, the clamp is opposing in this manner. So your isolation will look like this before you go to the mouth. So our patient today is going to have a class one done on both first permanent molars, upper and lower arch on the left hand side. So when you're doing this procedure, it's recommended to place the clamp on the upper arch first. Once that is done, you're going to place the clamp on the lower arch. There we go. See, this is the reason why you need to make sure there's extra room. Otherwise, you're going to have too much tension on the dental dam in the posterior region. So now that that's done, we're going to stretch the dam off the wings. Remember, we talked about that, stretching your dam off the wings using a blunted composite instrument on its side, just like this. And on the lingual, you can simply pull and stretch it off the wings. If you don't do that, you're going to get leakage occurring. And for the lower arch, you move on to the lower arch again stretching the dam off of the wings using the side of the instrument don't poke your instrument you're going to tear your dental dam and again on the lingual just pulling sideways until you clear the wing so now we're ready to go ahead and do our class one preparations and then re restore those teeth when you're removing this the uh, you always want to go in reverse so we're going to remove the lower clamp first, and then the upper clamp. And if you're doing sealants, you can turn this over and go ahead and restore or place your sealant on the opposite side. For sealants, I would recommend using the uh, Brinker Retractor Clamp, the B2 and B3 is what I normally use for my sealants. And uh, you want to make sure that when you do these types of isolations, you use, either use all wing clamps or all wingless clamps because the two techniques are, are a little bit different. So if you were using your a wingless clamp, the wingless clamp, this is called a modified technique, Modified wing. I would put safety floss on this, of course, but I'm just trying to show you how this would work. And then inserting the wingless clamp for the opposing arch. And then you would do the same thing. Insert your wing, wingless clamp first. Again, you would have a safety floss on this on these clamps, but for those of you who aren't familiar with using this technique, and simply insert this on your on your molar. Now, when you're doing a wingless this technique, you do want to stretch the dam 
over the wing, over the jaws of the clamp before you go to the lower arch to seat the that be clamp because if you don't do it that way the dam is going to slip off of the bow so you must secure the dam around the clamp first before you go to seat your lower arch so here we go we're gonna come here and we're gonna seat this down here and again we're gonna stretch the dam up and over the tooth and secure the dam in place. So that's how you would do it if you're doing sealants. Now, if there are teeth that require restoring in opposing arches, it is feasible to isolate both quadrants at the same time. Placing dam on both sides of the upper arch is tolerable by patients. However, traditional full lower arch application may not be tolerated as easily as swallowing may be more difficult. The procedure for applying dam for an upper and lower arch on the same side of the mouth is as follows. You punch the dam for both arches. Use wing clamps if feasible, using the wing technique that I described to you uh, when I did the single tooth isolations. Place the clamp on the anchor tooth on the upper arch first, and then on the lower arch. You make sure to stretch the dam off the wings of each clamp. You secure the dam on the opposing end using the wedget's cord. I normally secure the upper arch first on the anterior end and then the lower arch on the anterior end of my isolation. The next step is to place the interceptal dam between the teeth and again starting with the upper arch and then move to the lower arch. When removing the dental dam you will reverse the procedure. So essentially you're going to remove the wedge cord from the lower arch, cut the interceptal dam, remove the clamp. Then you're going to go to the upper arch, remove the wedge cord, cut the interceptal dam, remove the clamp. The dam and frame come off together if you're using a frame, but if you're using the frame flexa dam, the integrated frame will simultaneously come off with the dental dam. Always check for missing pieces. 